Welcome to this video, future homeowners. Today, we're gonna to talk about some more smart real estate moves. We're gonna delve into understanding one of the most pivotal steps in the home buying journey, the home inspection. And we're starting now. I'm Lisa Salt with Remax Fern and Salt Fowler, and whether you're a first time buyer or a seasoned homeowner, understanding the essence of home inspections is crucial before sealing the deal on your next dream home. We have compiled six points that buyers should know before the home inspection. Let's start with the basics. What is it? What is a home inspection? A home inspection is like a thorough health checkup for your prospective property. Just like you get at the doctor's office, or you should each year anyways, the full physical. The home inspection though isn't conducted by an MD, but instead by a certified inspector whose job it is to evaluate the home's general condition. Just like an MD or your GP, they are generalists. They know a little bit about everything. During the inspection, there are a number of critical areas that are examined by the inspector very closely. It includes like the foundation, the roof, the plumbing, electrical systems, those types of high ticket items. Now here are the six points that you should know as a buyer about the inspection. Number one, and this is important, never underestimate the value of a home inspection. While it might seem like an added expense that you can't afford, it can save you potentially significant financial burdens down the road. But Lisa, I don't want to pay the $500 or $550 or whatever it is. I can't afford it. Okay, so then how are you going to afford the $20,000 new roof that you didn't know you needed? Or the irreparable crack in the foundation? Secondly, if possible, attend the home inspection yourself or at least the last hour of the home inspection. You don't want to be there for the whole three or four hours of the home inspection. That's not necessary. It's super boring, all of it. But being present for that last hour, though, allows you to witness the inspector's findings firsthand. And then you can ask questions about the property and really see what, if any, the problems are. You'll also learn about the strong points, not just the negatives. It really helps to see what the potential issues are. And sometimes the inspector will point out a whole list of really minor things that on paper look super scary. However, if those things are explained, the inspector does want to take note of everything and doesn't want to miss anything. But lots of times these things are just future items you may want to keep your eyes open for versus major costly items. The next item is repair requests. Before we get into that though, be sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel as we're posting new videos like this every single week. On this channel, we give you the straight goods on Vernon and the whole North Okanagan, our ultimate Four Seasons paradise. Plus, we give you all sorts of smart real estate moves as well. Whether you're moving in nine days or 90 days or just curious about the area that we call home, be sure to call, text, or email and just add salt. Now let's get back to our list. We were talking about understanding repair requests. So after receiving the inspection report, there may be some issues things that require repair, things that require replacement. The crucial thing here is to be able to discern between major structural concerns and just minor fixes. Not every flaw demands immediate attention. If you as a buyer start going back to the seller to fix every single little thing, every little broken switch plate that you would have seen in your viewing of that property, that isn't what an inspection is about. It's about finding major problems that may impact the use or value or safety of the property. That switch plate is nothing. That busted up foundation is. That leaky roof is a problem. Assuming you didn't already know it was leaky and have already negotiated your deal based on that roof having to be replaced, you can't double dip and ask for money off twice. However, Let's say you're under the impression the furnace was original but in good shape. You bargained for an operating furnace which probably would need to be replaced, let's say in five years or maybe more. Home inspection uncovers a cracked heat exchanger. Now that's serious. That is something the seller should repair right away if they're living in the house for the safety of their family. So the seller will probably want to put in a brand new furnace that will cost say $5,000. However, they sold you a home or have an offer with you on a home that had an original furnace, not a new furnace. Had they sold that house with a new furnace, they likely would have asked more and probably sold for more. Probably not $5,000 more, but more. In these types of cases, then it's back to the negotiating table. 
which is actually point number four, renegotiating after an inspection. Major issues like cracked heat exchangers or foundation problems or severe structural defects could be negotiated for repairs or a reduction in the selling price. Minor issues though, that broken switch plate or extending the gutters to take water away from the house, those are more like maintenance type issues. You didn't bargain for a new house, you bought an older home. I mean, if it is a brand new home, then you have a deficiency list with the builder and that's a whole different story. I'm talking about a used home. Those small things might be better handled with a personal repair plan post-purchase. Usually in your real estate contract, there's gonna be a minimum on the amount you can start renegotiating anyways. However, even if there isn't, you will have a lot more pleasurable transaction ultimately if you don't nickel and dime the seller for every little thing. So going back to this scenario, you're a buyer, you had the home inspection, it uncovered a cracked heat exchanger. The seller wants to replace the furnace. Now you bought a used home. You thought the furnace was going to be good though. You didn't buy a brand new furnace, you bought a used furnace. So usually what happens is the seller and the buyer will probably kick in usually an equal amount depending on the situation. Point number six is seeking professional advice. Buyers should consult with a trusted professional to prioritize repair requests and pricing. The inspector isn't gonna give you a price on how much it costs to replace that furnace. They shouldn't anyways, because they don't know what the current prices are. You will need to get a heating specialist in the house to provide a quote that your realtor that can then present to the other realtor and hopefully come to a fair resolution of the problem. Point number seven, the inspection isn't a get out of jail free card. This is something an inspection is not. It's not a reason to walk away from the deal. You can't have a near perfect inspection and then say, I've changed my mind. I don't like this perfect inspection. I don't like this house anymore, so I'm not going to buy the house. It's not for that. It's not your, I get to walk away and get my deposit back card. You have to make reasonable attempts to have a home inspection and then you have to have a reason to walk away if you choose to cancel the deal. It can't just be arbitrary. Some people think they can. Following the inspection, you'll receive a comprehensive, super detailed report outlining all the inspector's findings. So make sure to review it in detail and ask any questions you may have. Keep that report on file and then fix all those minor repairs so that when you put the house up for sale, you have a record of everything you've done since purchasing the place. The inspection is also an educational opportunity. Don't miss that opportunity. Don't hesitate to ask the inspector for maintenance tips and advice on preserving your future home's condition. And those are our seven points for you to know as a buyer on inspections. Inspectors are thorough professionals. They meticulously examine the property. They check for structural integrity, signs of water damage, mold, pests, and other hidden issues as best as they can. However, it is only a visual inspection. They can't see behind the walls. They can't go into the ground to the sewer line. However, to me, I think it's a very important part of the home buying process to ensure you're protected from current or future major problems. Think of a home inspection as your insurance plan against unforeseen surprises. Things can still go wrong, yes they can. However, having an inspection lessens that probability. Remember, no house is flawless. However, I do think a home inspection is an invaluable investment. Just